Hello my friends, and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. China has been implementing various efforts to reclaim and combat desertification, which is a serious environmental problem in the country. Desertification affects 27% of China's total land area, and it poses a significant threat to the country's environment, economy, and people's livelihood. In recent years, China has completed several major transportation projects across deserts, including the Gobi Desert and the Taklamakan Desert. Moreover, China has also applied tree planting techniques to reverse desertification. According to the National Forestry and Grassland Administration, China planted 7.12 million hectares of trees in 2020, bringing the total of forested area to 70.4 million hectares. These efforts have not only reduced desertification, but also helped combat climate change by increasing carbon sequestration and reducing soil erosion. The construction of highways is a complex process that involves many different stages. The recent opening of a new highway in China's Taklamakan Desert provides a good example of the process involved in building a new roadway. The construction of the Yuli Kiamo Highway began in October 2017 and took nearly four years to complete. The first stage of the process involved surveying the area and designing the roadway. Engineers had to take into account the difficult terrain of the desert, including tall sand dunes and low-lying areas between them. They also had to ensure that the highway would be able to withstand the harsh weather conditions of the region, including frequent sandstorms. Once the design was complete, the construction teams began the process of clearing the land and preparing the foundation for the roadway. This involved leveling off sand dunes and filling in low-lying areas. The highway was built using layers of different materials, including gravel, asphalt, and concrete. To prevent the highway from being buried by sand, the constructors set up 58 million square meters of grass grids and more than 900 kilometers of barriers along the road. These measures help to stabilize the sand and prevent it from being blown onto the roadway. The construction process also involved the installation of infrastructure, such as bridges, culverts, and drainage systems. These were necessary to ensure that the roadway would be safe and usable in all weather conditions. Finally, the roadway was paved and marked with lane lines and signage. Once the highway was complete, it was open to traffic, providing a faster and more efficient way for people and goods to travel across the desert. The new South Xinjiang Railway is a major railway project in China that crosses the country's largest desert, the Taklamakan Desert, in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. The railway spans 1,213 kilometers and connects Houghton and Kashgar, two major cities in southern Xinjiang. The construction of the new South Xinjiang Railway began in 2009 and was completed in 2016, with a total investment of around 38.2 billion yuan, approximately 5.9 billion U.S. dollars. The project involved the construction of 227 bridges, 23 tunnels, and 8 stations, as well as the laying of 1,210 kilometers of track. One of the key techniques for building railways in the desert is land preparation. Before laying the tracks, the land must be leveled, compacted, and stabilized to ensure a stable foundation. In the case of the new South Xinjiang Railway, engineers used a layer of gravel to improve the stability of the ground. Another important technique is track laying. To prevent the tracks from sinking or shifting due to the shifting sands, engineers use a ballast bed made of crushed rock and gravel. The ballast bed helps to distribute the weight of the tracks and provides stability to the railway.
To cope with the extreme temperatures in the desert, construction teams also use specialized equipment and materials. For example, workers use concrete that sets quickly to prevent it from drying out too quickly in the heat. They also use cooling systems and shade tents to protect workers from heat stroke and dehydration. In addition to these techniques, engineers also implement measures to protect the railway from sand dunes and wind erosion. Workers have adopted a green solution to prevent sand from disrupting rail operations. The construction of the Houghton Ruojang Railway, which extends 825 kilometers through the southern edge of the desert, involved the planting of nearly 13 million shrubs and trees, with tall trees planted along the outer areas to reduce wind speeds and shrubs planted along the inner areas to fix the sand. Automatic irrigation control has also been realized using smartphones. The Sand Prevention Green Corridor has been built along the Houghton Rumchi Railway in China's Xinjiang region. This railway runs through the southern rim of the Taklamakan Desert and is a key national railway project extending over 825 kilometers. The belt is formed by about 50 million square meters of grass grids and 13 million shrub and tree seedlings stretching 300 kilometers along the railway. The Xinjiang Houghton Rumchi Railway Company Limited announced that the Sand Shield Green Belt will help prevent the encroachment of sand onto the railway, ensuring smooth operation and reducing the risk of accidents caused by sandstorms. The railway is expected to start operation next month after the final section of the Taklamakan Desert Railway loop line is completed. It is expected to promote the economic and social development of southern Xinjiang. This sand prevention green corridor is a remarkable initiative that highlights China's commitment to combating desertification and protecting the environment. The Taiwan High-Speed Rail (THSR) is a high-speed railway network that operates in Taiwan. It is the first high-speed rail system in Taiwan and has been in operation since 2007. The THSR project was initiated in the late 1990s to provide a more efficient and comfortable transportation option for travelers in Taiwan. The THSR network covers a total length of 345 kilometers and connects the major cities in Taiwan, including Taipei, Taoyuan, Xinchu, Taichung, Chiai, Tainan, and Kaohsiung. The maximum operating speed of the trains is 300 km per hour, which enables passengers to travel between Taipei and Kaohsiung in just 90 minutes. The construction of the THSR system was a massive undertaking that required extensive planning, coordination, and investment. The total cost of the project was estimated to be around 460 billion New Taiwan dollars, 15.6 billion United States dollars, which was mainly financed through private investment and loans from international financial institutions. One of the most notable features of the THSR system is its use of advanced technology and safety measures. The trains are equipped with state-of-the-art systems for speed control, signaling, and communication, which ensure that the trains operate safely and efficiently. Additionally, the THSR system is designed to withstand earthquakes and typhoons, which are common in Taiwan. Since its inception, the THSR system has been a significant contributor to Taiwan's transportation infrastructure and economy. It has become a popular mode of transportation for both business and leisure travelers and has helped to stimulate economic growth in the regions it serves.
However, the THSR system has also faced some challenges, including financial difficulties and criticism from some members of the public. The high cost of tickets and the perceived negative impact on the environment have been the main sources of criticism. Nevertheless, the THSR system has continued to operate and expand, with plans for future extensions to other parts of Taiwan. Renewable energy reached a major milestone with the inauguration of the country's first solar power plant. Located in the desert area about 80 kilometers west of the capital Doha, the 800 megawatts Al Karsa solar power plant was built by a joint venture formed by three Chinese enterprises at a cost of $417 million. The plant, which covers an area of 10 square kilometers and boasts around 2 million solar panels, is also one of the largest in the Middle East. The inauguration ceremony was attended by Qatar's Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Prime Minister and Minister of Interior Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa bin Abdulaziz Al Thani, and other senior officials. The event marked a significant step forward for the country's energy transition as it seeks to diversify its energy mix and reduce its carbon emissions. As a leading producer of petroleum and natural gas, Qatar has traditionally relied heavily on fossil fuels to power its economy. However, in recent years, the country has recognized the need to invest in renewable energy sources, given the global shift towards a low-carbon future. In fact, the Al Karsa project is part of a broader effort by the Qatari government to increase the share of renewable energy in the country's electricity mix. The government has set a target of producing 20% of its electricity from renewable sources by 2030. The Chinese companies responsible for building the Al Karsa plant have also played a key role in Qatar's renewable energy push. Through technological innovation, they were able to increase the plant's electricity generation capacity by 20% by using automated robotic arms to clean the panels. The Chinese equipment used in the project's 800 megawatts photovoltaic area also made up more than 60% of the total investment, according to Li Jun, on-site construction manager of the Al Karsa solar power plant. The Al Karsa plant is expected to meet 10% of Qatar's peak electricity demand and significantly increase the proportion of renewable energy in the country's energy consumption. This is particularly important for Qatar as the country prepares to host the FIFA World Cup in 2022, which it has pledged to make the first carbon-neutral World Cup. The massive sporting event is expected to draw millions of visitors from around the world, and the Qatari government is keen to demonstrate its commitment to sustainability and climate action.
the success of the Al Karsa project is likely to encourage further investment in renewable energy in Qatar and the wider Middle East region. The United Arab Emirates, for example, has been a leader in the development of solar power in the region, with several large-scale projects already in operation. Saudi Arabia, another major producer of oil and gas, has also set ambitious targets for the deployment of renewable energy, including a target of generating 50% of its electricity from renewables by 2030. The process and effect of grass grids and green barriers in the construction of highways, railway tracks through the desert, have been successful in China's anti-desertification process. China has made tremendous efforts to control sand by exploring new techniques, improving relevant laws, and launching greening projects. President Xi Jinping has personally been involved in the groundwork and pushing the agenda in person. More than half of China's manageable desertification land has been restored over the past decade, reducing the desertified land area by more than 4.33 million hectares since 2012. A series of significant projects have gradually built a green ecological barrier along the sandstorm line in northern China, including the Mao Wusu, Hunshan Daki, and Horkin deserts, and the surrounding areas of the Kubuki Desert, which have been transformed into an oasis. The grass grids and green barriers in construction have helped prevent desertification by reducing the amount of sand that can blow onto nearby areas. Grass grids are installed around the edges of the construction area to provide a barrier that reduces sand movement, while green barriers involve planting vegetation around the construction area to help anchor the soil and prevent erosion. China's forest coverage has reached 23.04%, up 2.68 percentage points from 2012, and 64 million hectares of trees have been planted in China over the past decade. Earlier data showed the area of desertified land in the country has shrunk by an annual average of 242,400 hectares reversing the trend from the late 1990s when desertified land expanded by 1.04 million hectares annually. Desertification remains one of the most pressing issues facing humankind, with more than 2 billion people from 167 countries and regions still under desertification threat. Thanks to years of sand control efforts, China has been quite prominent globally, with the Kubuki Desert being an excellent example. The Kubuki Desert is China's seventh largest desert, situated in Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. Years of greening efforts made more than 646,000 hectares of desert lush green, with restored biodiversity and noticeably improved ecology, lifting more than 100,000 people out of poverty. The construction of photovoltaic power stations along the Tyrium Desert Highway in the Taklamakan Desert, located in the southern parts of China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, marks a significant shift towards clean energy and reduction of carbon emissions. The Tyrium Desert Highway is a 532-kilometer-long road that traverses through the Taklamakan Desert, known as the world's second-largest shifting sand desert and China's largest desert. In previous years, diesel engines were used for pumping irrigation water to irrigate the shelter belts along the highway, which were planted with 20 million trees in 2005 by the Tyrum oil field to protect the desert from sand intrusion. 
However, in a move to reduce carbon emissions this year, 86 photovoltaic power stations are being constructed along the highway, using purely solar power instead of diesel generators. These clean energy power stations will pump underground water to irrigate the trees and achieve zero carbon dioxide emissions. The construction of the photovoltaic power stations is a result of early efforts that began in 2010, when 12 solar power stations were built along the desert highway to explore the use of clean energy as an alternative to diesel energy for pumping irrigation water. The success of these early efforts led to the renovation of 86 well stations, replacing diesel generators with photovoltaic power generators for pumping irrigation water. The photovoltaic power stations are designed and built differently at each valve station depending on the specific groundwater levels of the area. The photovoltaic panels, which have a lifespan of 25 years, are designed to withstand the sandstone of the desert and require regular cleaning. The power stations also have storage cabinets for energy, which can provide power for up to seven hours during cloudy weather.